know what that means. Okay, so that's messed up, the arrows, but anyways, it's life is an island, uh, self-discovery and truth in an evening of long goodbyes by Paul Murray, who also wrote Skippy Dies. I don't know how we got the same author, but, um, so basically, uh, the book is about this 24-year-old guy named Charles and his decline from his wealthy, no-working lifestyle. So he and his sister Belle, who is an aspiring actress, heads the theater, live in this really huge house called Amarot, and their father died a couple years back, and uh, their mother is in a place for a drinking problem, and Charles sits around all day saying he wants to restore the life of like the old country gentleman, so he drinks gimlets and takes walks and watches old Gene Tierney movies pretty much all day. And in some ways, he seems to practice existentialism because he pretty much just stays in his house and observes the world from there. And it's almost as if he alone exists in like his own little world of Amarant. And Belle, on the other hand, constantly talks of how she needs to like get out of Amarant and like go see the real world and like talk to people who actually have to work for a living. And so they don't pay their bills and the bank wants to take the house away and so Charles tries to fake his own death for insurance money. And the plan goes like totally wrong. It doesn't work out at all. And the rest of the book is more or less about him being forced to find a job while his mom and sister turn their home into a theater for the disadvantaged in order to avoid tax because they can call it charity. That's pretty much like what it's about. <laughs> so Charles, that's like just a picture of what he would look like if it was like a movie because he just sits around in a suit all day and drinks. Uh, Charles' sister explains that he needs to get a job in order to have something more to live for. And his response is, um, you're talking like a Stalinist. People don't get jobs to achieve things and learn values. They do it because they have to. And then they use whatever's left over to buy themselves things that make them feel less bad about having jobs. Can't you see it's just a terrible, vicious cycle? So that's just like explaining that he does not, he doesn't see the point of like having a job or anything like that. So he essentially is an island for the first half of the book. And he lives in Amarant, not understanding that people in the normal, wor normal world don't have like endless amounts of money for nothing. And in his mind, he works for the life of leisure. And he dreads the modernistic age that Ireland is coming into. And he feels that restoring the life of the country gentleman is like plenty of work. He says that like it's a lot of work just to keep the house running, even though they already have like a maid and like a cook and everything. So he really just sits around all day. And he, like, I don't know if this is like a real world, r real word, but he made up something called sprezzatura, which is like saying that whatever you do, you have to carry it out with grace. So he says that if one were to work in law, they need to raise it to the level of art, and if one was to laze, they should laze beautifully. So I guess he's like comparing having a real job to his life of just laying around. And so even after he is forced into the real world, he constantly reminisces about his past in the good old days at his home and at his school. He moves in with Belle's ex-boyfriend, Frank, and gets a job in a bread factory. Um, however, he's still so stuck in his own island in existentialist ways that he never really truly like lives like a normal person who has to work and like interact with other people until the very end of the book. Um, when Belle, his sister, commits suicide because she gets so fed up with the way that people act at Amarant, their home. And in her very last speech of the book, uh, Belle discusses how she's always been like too overly concerned with the truth, with the truth to ever actually be an actress. And that when they were growing up, like their their mom and dad would always uh, act like things didn't happen if they just didn't talk about them at all. And this probably like influenced how Charles like lived like an island and didn't pay attention to the outside world enough and just acted like other people didn't really exist because he never interacted with them. And Belle makes Charles promise never to go back to Amarant and then she crashes her car into like the wall outside and dies. And um, so Charles never does go back to live there. He forces himself to become a part of the real modernistic age and becomes happier. And um, he may not have like totally left behind his existentialist personality, but he's like getting there by the end of the book. 